Well, good morning, everyone. Welcome to our webinar today. That's Learning Environments and High-Tech Readers in the Sharper Vision Store. Today's webinar comes to you from the Wisconsin Council of the Blind and Visually Impaired. The Council is a private, not-for-profit, community-based organization, and we provide services, advocate legislation, and educate the public. Um, as usual, today's webinar does have videos that go along with it, with demonstration of a lot of our products. Today's moderator is Brent Perzentka. Brent has worked at the Council for the last 14 years, and he is a manager of our Sharper Vision Store. Um, you'll see in the videos contributions from several of our other staff members. Um, Denise Jess was demonstrating uh, her knitting under the Acrobat. Adam Grassnickel will show up playing some of the board games. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to Brent Perzenka, who's going to talk to us a little bit about what's new in the Sharper Vision store and how things have changed over the past year. Good morning, everyone. Thanks for attending today's webinar on the Sharper Vision store. Um, so if you weren't aware, we remodeled our store um, earlier this summer. And um, the way we remodeled it, we separated the store into different environments that enables people that visit our store to use some of the products in a hands-on way to see how that that product might be used in their daily lives at home. So in the webinar today, we'll be going through those different environments. There's five of them. Um, there's an office environment, a living room environment, a kitchen environment, a sewing environment, and a health and, and medical environment. And along with those environments, we'll be demonstrating a few of the products and talking about some of the products in each environment as we go along. Coming up in 2018, um, we will be launching a new online store with all of our updated products. And along with our online store, we're going to have some of the products that uses um, instructions. So for like a talking watch, we're going to have those instructions audibly recorded online so that if you need to find those instructions, you can do so on our website audibly. Um, we'll also be having some, some descriptive videos for some of the products that will describe them more in detail available on our online store, along with um, those products in a new updated catalog. Uh, we hope to have uh, the, online uh, the online store in the updated catalog sometime available in early spring. Let's move on to our environments and some of the products that we'll be demonstrating for you today. The first environment that we'll be looking at is our office environment, and we'll be demonstrating a few of our electronic devices, some handheld video magnifiers, and our OrCam glasses, and the Acrobat desktop video magnifier reader. So we'll go ahead and start that video now. So we're now going to discuss um, two of our video portable magnifiers that we carry. Um, there are many different video magnifiers on the market. Um, they all have subtle differences. Um, we usually suggest, if possible, sitting down and trying out uh, the different ones and finding out which one would fit your needs. So today I'm going to uh, just demonstrate two uh, of the eight that we carry. So this first one is called the Eschenbach Visalux Digital HD. The Visalux has a 7-inch screen on it. And there's a stand that you're going to prop up when using it at a table. If you weren't going to use it at a table, let's say if you were out at the store, you could leave that stand in and hold the Visalux um, as you put it up to a price tag. To turn on the Eschenbach Visalux, there's a, a big button right down in the middle um, of the unit. It's indented. It's the only button that's around it. So as I push that, it turned on into the last mode um, that we had. Um, also when I turned it on, it gave me the battery power and the magnification level that we are currently set at. On the upper right, we have our magnification zoom in button. So when I push that button in, 
it zoomed way in and it also told me here that I zoomed into 22 times. Below that button is the zoom out button. So there as I, as I push that, it zoomed out and it told me we're at five times magnification. These buttons also are tactile so you can feel them. On the left hand side of the unit there's two buttons. The lower left hand button is our contrast button. So as I push that, it scrolls through the different contrasts that are available. So here's yellow on black. This is a color. This is a positive image. This is a negative image. Above the contrast button on the upper left hand side is our freeze button. So as I push that, essentially what it did was it took a picture of whatever the camera was showing and then we can move the device away from what we were looking at if we wanted to get a closer view. So this may come in handy. Let's say there's a price tag that's way on the top shelf that you can't read. You can hold the unit up to that price tag, take a picture, and then move it down. The other thing that you can do after you've taken that picture is we can still scroll through the different color modes if that helps us see it more clearly. We could also zoom in. And then there's also a scrolling function now. So on the upper left and the upper right are two buttons that you could use to scroll from whatever you froze on the screen. So as I push the upper right hand button, it's scrolling to the right. If I push the left hand button, it scrolls to the left. That only works though in, on the freeze function button. So you can't scroll if, it's, if you haven't taken a picture and froze what's on the screen. The next portable video magnifier that I'm going to demonstrate is the Ruby XL HD. The Ruby XL HD has a 4.3 inch screen, so it's a little more portable than the Visolux. There's also a, there's a couple different functions in how you could use the, the Ruby. Um, there's a stand that I flipped open, so if you're at a table, it gives you a nice viewing angle to read. If you didn't want to use the stand, on the back there's a handle that folds out. So if you wanted to hold it like a traditional magnifier, you could do so. The power button for the Ruby is located on the lower left hand part of the, the unit. It's an indented button, so you can't accidentally turn it off. And you can also feel the ridges um, for the button. On the upper right hand side we have our zoom in button which also has a tactile mark and the zoom out button right below that. And below those two buttons we have our freeze button. It's going to freeze what's on our screen and once we have that frozen we can still zoom in or zoom out. To unfreeze it you simply press the, the freeze button again now we're back to live mode. On the left hand side of the unit we have our contrast button. So the top button is going to scroll through one direction and if you push the button below that it's going to go in the opposite direction. Now I'm going to demonstrate our desktop video magnifier called the Acrobat. And some of the nice features about the Acrobat is that it's a little more portable uh, than your standard desktop unit. Um, so there's a handle that's on the back of the Acrobat uh, to make it easy to lift. So if you're a snowbird for instance and want something that's going to be easily transportable um, this might be a good option. Another nice thing about the Acrobat to a regular desktop video magnifiers. It doesn't take up as much room on your desk because you don't have the XY um, table. I have my newspaper down on the desk 
The camera for the Acrobat is above the screen. So I have that tilted down towards our newspaper. And then to control the Acrobat, you have a couple options. On the camera itself, you have a toggle switch that can make the print larger or smaller. You have a mode button that can take us through different color modes. So here's a positive black on white, a negative white on black, a yellow on blue, green on black, yellow on black. If you only want a color in black and white, for instance, you could have that programmed into the Acrobat. Another option to function the Acrobat is using a remote control. So if you didn't want to be reaching up to push these buttons, you can use the remote control. So here I'm using the remote control to make the print larger and smaller again. Here's our mode button that I'm pushing that takes us through the different contrasts. Is there's a line guide, so if let's say for instance you wanted to have um, a line show up to help you keep as you scroll down through um, your reading material, you could have that line guide on and you could have it either horizontally or vertically. If you're watching, you could pick this up. So here I have the horizontal line and I can make that larger or smaller. So here I have it about the size that I would use it for for our newspaper article that I'm reading. Here I have the vertical line. So let's say if I wanted to have that set to, a, to our column here, I could widen that. Here I got it set for our column. Here I have the, using the horizontal um, line, I have the top and the bottom um, portion uh, blacked out so I can only see one light at a time as I move along. And then you can do the same thing vertically. Looking at yourself, so here I have it on what's called self-viewing mode. I don't know if I want to look that close at myself quite honestly, but anyways, um, so if you're uh, someone that wanted to put on makeup, use the Acrobat to help you put on your makeup if you wanted to do any distance viewing. So let's say for instance you had the Acrobat in a window and you have a bird feeder that's outside. You can tilt the camera towards what you'd like to look at and then you can zoom in on that or zoom out depending on what you're looking at. So here I have the camera tilted across the room at a painting we have up on the wall. I can really zoom in on that painting pretty close if I want to. Okay, and we did have a question uh, for Brent. There was a question um, if we could also say what the prices are for the products. Okay, sure. So the the Acrobat that we looked at last there, um, it, the price is going to depend on the screen size that you get with the Acrobat. Um, but prices start at about $2,700 for the small screen, which is a 17-inch monitor. Um, for the Viso Lux, um, the first portable video magnifier we looked at, made by Eschenbach, um, the cost of that unit is $695. And the second one, the Ruby that we looked at, um, is also $695. Okay, so I think uh, this next little section is probably what many of you are um, interested in learning more about, and, and that is the um, OrCam glasses. So I'll let Brent talk a little bit about those, and then we will run the video. Okay, so the OrCam glasses, we'll talk more in depth about them, but essentially they're an OCR device, or it's going to be um, some glasses that will read text and other things to you audibly. You also see, if you have some vision on our screen, um, a picture of what's called the Geordi glasses, and those are magnification glasses that just came out on the market. We do have those here in our store, 
um, as well for demonstration. Since we just got those in a few days ago, we, we weren't able to include those with the a video tutorial here in our webinar, but they're, they're portable um, magnification glass. We suggest trying some of these products out if you are interested in purchasing them because they, they, it's not one size fits all. Now we're going to talk about the OrCam glasses, which are an OCR device. OCR stands for Optical Character Recognition, meaning uh, letters or numbers that it's going to recognize and read them audibly to us. So the OrCam glasses have a little camera that can fit um, on any pair of glasses. Um, we have the camera connected to a general pair of readers here, but you could attach them to your prescription glasses. So there's a camera that's going to go on the right hand side of the glasses and connected to that camera is an earpiece where it's going to read out loud to you what the camera is, is looking at. Connected to the camera is a, a cord uh, that goes to the main pack of the OrCam glasses. Uh, the pack is about the size of a, a cell phone. And on the pack, we have a power button. We have a volume up and down switch, both of which are tactile, so you can feel for these. On the opposite side of the pack, we have our, our play button or our picture taking button. We also have a, a charging port and a power port along with a jack for earphones or for speakers. For this demonstration we have the OrCam glasses connected to a speaker so you can listen along with me as I'm demonstrating the glasses. So the OrCam glasses can um, serve in many different functions. It can read um, text. So for instance, if you were at a restaurant and wanted to read a menu, it could read a menu to you. If you wanted to read the newspaper, it could read the newspaper to you. And I'll demonstrate how to do that later um, in this program. The other things it can do, it can read dollar denominations. It can identify colors. It can tell you the time. It can also do facial recognition. It can also do product recognition, which also has to be stored in the, in the unit. So for instance, if you were in your refrigerator and you were going to have a, a soda pop um, and you were, um, had Coke, Diet Coke, Diet 7-Up, you could have all of those sodas stored in the unit so when you picked up the particular soda, the OrCam glasses could identify which soda that is. Um, the OrCam glasses can also do some distance reading. So for instance, if you were at a McDonald's or a Culver's where there was a menu board, it could read um, what was on that board in the distance. The difficult part with that is that as a non-sighted person, you have to be able to know where to look for those signs. So that can be a little more difficult. First, I'll start off with general reading. And there's a few ways that you can um, can use the OrCam. You could use the OrCam pack, which I had mentioned earlier has a play button on it or a picture taking button. You could also use hand gestures um, to take the picture. So first I'm going to activate the OrCam. I've had it on standby and the first thing it's going to do is it's going to announce to us how much battery life we have left. Um, on a full charge the OrCam um, can generally go about four hours of continued use. Uh, you can use it plugged in though. So I'm going to turn it on here. Waking up. Battery is 70% charged. So it just announced that the OrCam is 70% charged. So I have some reading material here and I'm going to hold the reading material about a foot from my nose and then I'm going to point at the reading material for the OrCam to take the picture. 
easy to use. All you have to do is point. Or can my eye responds to simple gestures making it easy to use, whether it's to read, find an item or recognize a face or product. No need to search for audiobooks, learn new software or use other tools. Copyright tree. So as, so as you can see, it, it took a picture when I pointed at the text and read it back to us. And to stop the reading, I put up a, a stop gesture so it opened hand motion, motion about, a, about the same distance, about a foot in front of my nose to stop the reading. So I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to try reading this People magazine here and see if I can get it to start from the, the first column. So I'm going to position my head with the reading material in front of me about a foot. And I can kind of feel with my hands about where the upper left is. And Kathy Holmes were key players in the split. They took control back, says a source. Manhattan with six-year-old Surrey on June 26th. Katie. Okay, so again, it didn't start at the beginning, so I'm going to try it again. Strolling in Manhattan with six-year-old Surrey on June 26th, Katie Holmes betrayed no hint that anything was amiss, with Holmes' husband, Tom Cruise, busy filming. The constant mother-daughter compact. Okay, so that time it did um, start from the upper left-hand column. Um, it took a few tries, and... Um, it's, it's easier for me to know that it, it missed that first column uh, because I can see what it was reading. If you weren't able to see that, you might um, not know that, that it, it wasn't reading the left-hand column. So I'm now going to demonstrate how the OrCam glasses can tell us the time and the date. How, how to get it to read the time and the date is I'm going to hold my, my wrist up in front of my nose like I would if I was going to look at a watch that was on my wrist. So I'm going to hold it up and tilt my wrist towards me like I'm looking at a watch. The time is 10.47 a.m. So as you can see, I held my wrist up, tilted it towards my nose, and it told us the time. Another feature the OrCam glasses um, can do is read us bill denominations. So similar to how we had to read text, by holding the text up about a foot from our nose and pointing at it, we do the same thing with our money denominations. One dollar. So there it read one dollar. Another nice function that the OrCam glasses can do is identify colors. And similar to the other things, in order to have it read those colors, I'm going to take my finger and I'm going to point at the color um, that we wanted to read, um, but with that I have to leave my finger on the color that we're looking at, so uh, as opposed to just reading text where I could point at it and move my finger away, I have to keep my finger on the color. So to demonstrate, I have a piece of material here, I'm going to hold it about a foot from my nose, take my finger. Dark gray area. So what it said was dark gray area. Another function uh, that we've mentioned that the OrCam glasses can assist with is product recognition. With the product recognition, you have to have the products stored in the unit. So you have to do that um, before you can have it actually read it to you. Um, so one of the things we have stored in here is uh, this food. And I'm going to do our normal point at it. Star Kiss Thai Style Tuna. So if you notice, that was my voice that you heard on there because I had stored this in the OrCam glasses earlier. If you're out at a grocery store, it's going to be able to read um, any sort of printed material um, that's legible. It, it won't read handwriting or cursive or maybe um, some other artistic type of, of wording. I'm now going to demonstrate products uh, that the OrCam can try reading that aren't programmed into the OrCam glasses. So for instance, if you're out at the grocery store and you're picking up um, something along the aisles, or even if you're at home going through your cupboard um, looking for um, something for dinner. So I'm going to pick up this can. I'm going to 
Again, hold it about a foot in front of my nose. Point at it. Full kernel sweet corn. My dulce de granosa eros. So there it read that it was whole kernel sweet corn and then also read it to us in Spanish, which is written on there. Um, I'm also going to try it on a pill bottle. So if you have to take multiple medications and want to make sure you're taking the right one, um, we'll see how it reads that. So I'm going to, again, hold it in front of my nose, try to position the camera towards it. Point. Kmart, Worf. Amy 58T Bailey Road 8203 Naperville, Illinois 60565. Take one tablet by a Physifinidine GOM T8 equals Lucnaret FAR Allegra 6 OMG. So you can see it read the pill bottle. There's a lot of information on there, so you'll have to decipher what information was read and, and hopefully you can figure out which medication it is. Um, the next thing I'd like to demonstrate for you is how the OrCam glasses can read um, signs at a distance. Um, so for this demonstration, I have a sign that's about two feet from me. So I'm going to adjust myself to try to look at the sign. Again, all I have to do is point with my finger. Thank you. Two, Industries for the Blind for providing funds to furnish this office experience. There it read the sign to us. And another sign that's about, oh, a good eight to 10 feet away up on the wall that I'm also gonna try to see if the Orcan glasses can read. Point at that. Office, environment. So there it did read the sign. Again, the trouble with that if you're not sighted is you have to know that there's a sign there to begin with and to know where to look at. Um, so if you were gonna use these at a restaurant for like a menu board, you know, you'd have to look up um, to have it read there. I'm now going to use the OrCam glasses um, to demonstrate how they can do the facial recognition features. Um, again, the, the individual has to be programmed into the OrCam glasses um, beforehand. Um, and for demonstration, we have um, Gene Kalashur here who's going to help us with that. So Gene's standing in front of me, and I'm going to Push the button on your cam. Dean Kalshur. There it read um, Gene's name off to us so we know that uh, that's who is standing in front of me. So as you can see with the OrCam glasses, they can function for many different purposes. Uh, there, there is a learning curve involved with the OrCam glasses. Um, so if you were if you were interested in um, acquiring the OrCam glasses. Um, we can help train you in how to use the glasses. Uh, there's, I, there's two different types of OrCam glasses um, that they make. Um, one that will only do um, OCR text reading, so it's only going to read um, text. Um, and then the second pair, which will read text along with all the other things that we've demonstrated today the color identification, the money identification, um, the person and product identification. Okay, and I, I should have mentioned earlier, I, I will be here until all questions are answered. So after um, we're finished with the webinar, I'll, I'll be here to answer any questions anyone may have. Next, we're going to venture off into our living room environment. That doesn't mean that you're allowed to take any naps here while we're doing this webinar. Um, but in our living room environment, we're going to discuss um, some different magnif magnifiers um, that you might find helpful in your living room environment. Um, we're going to demonstrate our Max TV glasses for watching television and the Amazon Echo product. In our living room environment, we also have some different floor lamps um, that may be helpful and assist you with better lighting. So here we go with our video on the living room environment. I'm now going to go over different assisted devices that can help you in your living environment. So first off, for reading purposes, uh, most of us prefer to, to read in a comfortable place. So uh, the living environment is one of those places in your comfy chair. Um, so a couple things that may help you read in this environment. Uh, I have a lap desk here that is nice, it, it props up 
um, on your lap and then you can put your reading material on top of that. It's a hard surface and there's also a bar at the bottom that can help it from sliding down. The first device I'm going to show you is a lighted stand magnifier. With this magnifier you set it flat on your print. So this is where the lap desk comes in handy. And there's a light in here so you won't need any external light to help with this. And with the stand magnifier you slide it along your reading material. There's also options to have lighting and magnification combined in the same unit. So here we have our, our odd light. It's a floor lamp that I've turned on. And we have a magnifier that can swing out from the lamp itself. And it's adjustable. So you can maneuver that till it's comfortable. With lighting, you're generally going to want the light behind the magnifier so that it's not reflecting into your uh, back into your eyes. So as you can see, I have the magnifier positioned a few inches from the print with the light shining behind it. Other options, if you just wanted a, a good floor lamp to help you read, then you could use a different type of magnification device. This is a, a standard handheld non-lighted magnifier. So here I have the light still shining behind the magnifier so it's not reflecting into my eyes. And then I'm holding the magnifier a few inches from the print as I read the newspaper. This magnifier, when you pick it up by the handle, the light's going to turn on automatically so there's no switches to activate with this magnifier. This is nice if you, if you happen to be forgetful to turn your magnifier off so it will save you on batteries. Um, also if you have any sort of um, trouble with uh, arthritis with, with turning on switches or any sort of dexterity issues. So here I'm holding the magnifier a few inches from the print and reading and it's enough light on this magnifier that I don't need the floor lamp turned on. And when I set that magnifier down, the light automatically turns off. Another magnifier that we carry is this small little portable pocket type magnifier. This also has a light in it. So there's a case that's protecting the lens. And if I pull that case down, the light turns on. So this particular magnifier is nice if you want to do what we call spot reading. So if you're out at a grocery store and need to look at a, um, a tag or if you're out at a restaurant and, and need to read the, the menu. Um, for this, maybe let's say you're looking at the, the TV schedule and just want to look to see a particular time. Uh, you're probably not going to want to read a whole newspaper with a, with a small lens like this, but it is a handy option to have. I'm now going to discuss different assisted devices to help you with watching your television. So one of those devices is a large print television remote control. So this particular remote control has about half inch buttons with black on white contrast. The buttons also have different shapes. So for instance, the numbers have round buttons that you could feel. The volume up and down and channel up and down has um, triangle shapes that you could feel. And some of the other buttons uh, have square shapes for their functions. Many of the cable providers now are able to offer large print remotes as well. So you will have to talk to your provider to find out if they, if they have those remotes um, available to you. Um, other services that the local cable providers now offer is uh, voice uh, cable um, feedback. So for instance, if you're ch changing your channel, it's going to tell you what channel you're changing it to. Or if you go into the menu guide, it's going to tell you you're in the menu guide and then talk to you as you scroll through the different menu guide options. Every cable provider is different, so I would suggest talking to your local providers and asking them about their accessibility options. When watching your television, uh, if you do still have um, vision, 
Uh, it helps to sit closer to the television. You're not going to damage your eyes any further. That's an old wives' tale. So we suggest sitting as close as you can. Um, if that still is not enabling you to help view your television, we have a few devices that may be able to assist with making your screen larger. Um, so the, the products that we have are called the Max TV glasses, and we have two options for the Max TV glasses. We have one standalone version that you would wear without your glasses. So if you don't wear glasses, you would use these. But if you wear glasses, we have a clip-on version that's available. And essentially what these are going to do is they're going to enlarge your television screen by about two times its normal size. With the clip-on glasses, once you have them on, they auto-focus. With the Max TV glasses that you use without your normal prescription glasses, there's a dial on each side that you would need to focus for the distance that you're sitting at, similar to binoculars. So as I put them on, I'm going to close one eye. Right now I have my right eye closed, and I'm going to adjust the left eye to the correct focus distance. Once I have that set, I'm going to close my left eye, and then focus the right eye to the correct distance. Once I have that set, I can open up both eyes, and they should be focused. Another neat new device that can help you in your living environment is the Amazon Echo. This is the Amazon Echo here. Uh, there's a couple different versions of the Amazon Echo. Um, this particular one um, sits about one foot high uh, by about three and a half inches wide. There's also an Amazon Dot. It's a smaller version uh, that's more portable. It doesn't need to be plugged in. The Amazon Echo does need to be plugged in. Uh, the biggest differences in the two is that uh, the Amazon Echo has a better sound than the Dot does. These can be purchased um, from Amazon. Um, so there's multiple functions that you can use the Amazon Echo for. Um, some simple things. Uh, first off, to activate the Amazon Echo, uh, her name is Alexis. Alexa, I'm sorry. So when no I see, oh, she, she, after I apologize, she said, no worries. Um, like any conversation, you would start off by um, saying the person's name. So Alexa, what time is it? It's 1046 AM. Thank you. Alexa, what's the weather forecast today? Right now in Madison. It's 40 degrees with cloudy skies. Today's forecast has snowy, rainy weather with a high of 51 degrees and a low of 36 degrees. So it has many capabilities uh, for media purposes. If you wanted to ask it a sports score from the day before, it can give you that. Um, if you wanted to, to ask it for Wikipedia knowledge, it could give you that information. You can play different games with it. So if you wanted to play Jeopardy, uh, Alexa can play Jeopardy with you. Um, you could also use it as a timer. This is Jeopardy. Well, she heard me ask Thanks, once, Johnny. so here we go. Yeah, well, Alexa, stop. See you next time. Alexa, set timer for five seconds. Second timer, five seconds, starting now. If you're like me, you think of your, your shopping list multiple times throughout the day, and sometimes it's hard to remember all at once. So she can keep a running tally of your shopping list. Um, Alexa, please add hamburgers to my shopping list. Hamburgers added to your shopping list. Alexa, what's on my shopping list? You have nine items on your shopping list. Here are the five most recent. Hamburgers, bread apples, strawberries, eggs, steak. Would you like to hear your last four items? No, thank you. 
Okay. Alexa, who won the Oscar for Best Actor this year? Casey Affleck won Best Actor in 2017. So as you can see, she's an encyclopedia waiting for, for questions. We also have Alexa set up um, with our lamps here. You do have to name each device to itself. So if you, you know, had your television, just turn on your television, you would recognize that. But if you had different lamps, you have to have a different name for each lamp. Um, so this lamp we have named is, is SVS lamp for Sharper Vision Store lamp. Alexa, turn on SVS lamp. Okay. So the lamp here next to me turned on by just asking Alexa to do so. Now I'll ask her to turn it off. Alexa, turn off SVS lamp. Alexa, turn off SVS lamp. Okay. So she also confirmed with us that it got turned off. So as you could hear, when I asked her the first time, she didn't recognize my command, but she didn't confirm that she had turned it off. And the second time when I asked her to do it, she confirmed, okay, that it was turned off. So I knew that it was turned off. I'm going to show you here what the box looks like that we have the lamp connected to. And you can get these at most um, electrical um, retail stores, so Best Buy, um, or those type of uh, retail stores. So it's a smaller box. And we just had the lamp plugged into this. Now we're going to move on to the kitchen environment here, so get our appetites ready for lunch. I'm now going to discuss different adaptive aids from our kitchen environment. So there's a number of different assistive devices that can help you um, while you're cooking or baking. So this drink holder can hold different types of glasses. It's got a flat base with rubber bumpers on the bottom so it doesn't slip. Kind of this was made so that when you put your cup in the holder, it's not going to spill. And they designed it to fit different size cups and we've tested it on like a tall milk glass. Here we have a coffee mug in, and it does both, um, holds both well. On the front of it, there's also some, some spots here if you wanted to have, uh, if you had your tea packet, you could keep in here, or sugar packets. Um, and this device was also um, designed by somebody who is visually impaired that happens to live in Menominee Falls. So it's a locally um, designed device. Next to the drink holder here, we have our George Foreman grill. Um, the George Foreman grill is a simple to use device um, for making sandwiches, um, grilling hamburger patties, that sort of thing. Um, it's easy to, to turn on and off. Uh, you don't have to worry about dials. Um, right now, as you can see, here, um, we have a, a sandwich that's in there that I'm gonna demonstrate um, flipping that. So to flip it, we also carry this double spatula that works like tongs. Um, so there's two spatulas that are attached um, at one end. And so if I was to flip this sandwich, I would use it like a tongue where I would slide underneath the bottom spatula, clamp down, and then flip. We also carry some slicing aids for, uh, for cutting different um, food objects. So um, the first one I'm going to demonstrate is our um, slicing knife. So the slicing knife that we have here has a guide um, that's on it and you can adjust that guide to different lengths depending on the thickness of what you want to slice. Um, it also indicates on the guide um, the size of the length. So here it's telling me that I'm going to slice it for one inch. Now it, it's difficult to see that, so maybe something that you may, may want to mark with something tactile to help you indicate the different lengths. So here I, I have my, my length set, so I'm going to have it set to the half inch slice. 
And I have an apple here that I'm going to demonstrate it on. So I have my apple on our cutting board. And on our cutting board I have the white side up so that the contrast from the apple shows up. On the opposite side of this cutting board is a darker side that you would use for onions or lighter type on, uh, um, food products. So for the apple, since it's red, I'm going to use the white side of the cutting board. So I have the apple down. I take the guide and I, I have it touch the side of the apple with the knife on top. So once I have that set, all I have to do is slice down. And it gives us our half inch apple slice. Another device that we have for, for slicing is if you were using a different knife, um, we have a little guide that you would put on your fingers that helps protect you. So if I was using this, I would set it down on the food product that I was trying to slice, and then I would take my knife, set it against the guide, and then go down. Alright, so that was our kitchen environment that we just explored. We're going to just show a picture of our healthcare environment here. So some products you might find in our healthcare environment are magnified mirrors, uh, talking blood pressure meter, talking clinical thermometer, talking weight scale, an eye drop guide. Um, we also carry a wide variety of sunglasses or light filters. Similar to magnifiers, we recommend that individuals try out the different filters for different lights. Um, everybody's eyes are a little bit different, so what works for one person might not work for the next. But we do have a wide variety of styles and different sizes in the sunglasses. And last but not least, our fifth environment here is our sewing environment. Uh, we have many different sewing aids to assist you in continuing your knitting or sewing hobbies. And we also have a game section. We have both large print or tactile and braille type games so you can have fun with friends and family. So we have a short video here that's going to demonstrate the sewing and game. Hi, I'm Denise Jess. I'm executive director here at the council and I'm sitting in front of a digital magnifier this afternoon and it's a tool I use frequently in my office to look at documents, particularly spreadsheets and things with lots of details. But um, this afternoon I'm sitting here working on um, my knitting and I am a, a huge proponent of knitting for a lot of reasons and this is one of the first times I've actually sat down in front of a digital magnifier to knit. Um, I've sometimes pulled my knitting out when I've dropped a stitch um, because even though I knit so much with just the memory in my hands, picking up a drop stitch for me requires also being able to see it. And the magnification that's here is so amazing. If I drop a stitch, I can't believe I did it on purpose, but there we go. It's right here. It's easy for me to pick back up. I can see it and I can slide it right back on the needle again. The other thing that's challenging for me is discerning colors. Um, I struggle with that a lot. So under magnification, I'm uh, much more able to discern the greens and the uh, kind of magenta, purpley color and the um, blues that are living in here that I wouldn't be able to see just under normal circumstances or even with normal light. The combination of the light and the magnification really allows me to see what I'm doing and discern the needle color from the color of the stitches and be able to pick them up um, so much easier. So, oh darn, I'm not paying attention, and there I go, dropping a stitch again. So I haven't knit this one yet, so I need to get it back onto my left-hand needle. So I'm both using a combination of feel, which is what I do a lot, but I grasped the stitch, and then I picked it up and slid it back on the needle, 
and now I can verify that I've actually picked up the whole stitch. Sometimes I split the stitch and, and only get half of it, but now I can verify that I can do the whole stitch. Um, I have a small portable one of these that I carry, magnifier that I carry with me, and I use it a lot for reading knitting patterns. Um, because I can magnify and I can refer to the pattern while I'm knitting and not have to put the knitting down every time I want to um, check to make sure I'm doing the pattern correctly. So we're now going to demonstrate some of the tactile games that the council sells at the Sharper Vision store. One of those games is tactile tic-tac-toe. So to help me out in this process so that I, I'm not winning by myself here is our, my colleague Adam. So we're going to play tactile tic-tac-toe. So the board itself has some holes um, that are tactile that you can feel, along with some indented lines um, for the grid. Um, one piece uh, for one team has a round peg. The other piece has a square peg. So Adam, if you'd like to go first. OK. So I can feel where Adam put his peg. Counter. So like most tic-tac-toe games, we came to a draw. The next tactile game that we are going to demonstrate is tactile checkers. Uh, the checkerboard that we have here is a magnetic checkerboard. Um, it has round pieces for one side and square pieces for the other side. The board, um, besides being magnetic, is also tactile, so it's raised, so you can feel the, checker, um, the checkerboard, the, the spaces you need to move. Well, for the king me pieces, when you get that far in the game, they have an extra raised bump on them so you can feel which ones would be the king piece. So we'll demonstrate just a few moves for you here. Adam, if you want to go first. So I can feel where Adam went there. Because it's magnetized, the pieces aren't going to slide around for us. There you can see how it works. The last tactile game that we will demonstrate is tactile chess. Similar to the other games that we've demonstrated, the, the chess board has tactile raised squares with pegs, so you can feel on the board where you're moving. All the pieces are different shapes, um, and each one actually has um, a tactile dots on top of it so you can distinguish between the different pieces. Okay, so for this demonstration I'm going to go first. So I can feel that this is a pawn, so I'm going to move one space forward. Adam took his knight and moved forward. So it's important to be able to feel where everyone's moving. So with the tactile chessboard being raised, I can, I can easily feel what spaces are available and where my opponent has moved. Thanks uh, for those that are still hanging in there with us. I know we're a few minutes past uh, our time that we supposed to stop at. For those of you that have hung in there with us, uh, we are offering a 10% coupon for the Sharper Vision Store that's good for one year. To use the coupon, either you can just mention to us when you, if you're calling to place an order or if you're in the store, mention it to us. We do have a list of the people that um, attended the webinar today.
so that concludes the the video portion here and uh, my part in it but i will stick around to to answer questions i appreciate all of you taking your time out of the day to uh, visit us here at the sharper vision store in our webinar i'll now turn it over to gene thank you all for tolerating some of our learning curve here to get the zoom up and running i'm going to check on a few questions here there was a question and I'm going to go ahead and answer it live here since I might have lost it and that was a question about having trouble seeing to open the lock on an apartment door when the hallway is dark and carrying a flashlight but then you run out of hands and there are some little lights that can be stuck on the door that go right over the um, door lock and so that is one way is to add the light onto the door rather than trying to hold the light. The other option is to put a tactile mark right next to where the key goes into the slot. Then you put your thumb on that tactile mark, the thumb of your non-dominant hand, and then the key slides along your thumbnail then into the opening is an option. As Brent said, we'd be more than happy to answer any questions. We do have a question about being open the Friday after Thanksgiving, and unfortunately, we are closed the Friday after Thanksgiving. The store is open typically Monday through Friday from 8 to 4.30. If there are any products that you want to see and especially spend some time with, like if you want to come in specifically to see the Orcam glasses or the Jordy, I'd recommend that you give a call to Brent and schedule that time so that he's here or somebody else is here who is knowledgeable in doing the demonstration and giving you a good chance to try them out. Because that can always be very, very disappointing if you travel to the council, you get here, and it's a day that you know somebody has scheduled to be off and then nobody's here to give you a hand. So particularly for some of those higher end things, I'd really encourage you to call and just say to Brent, I plan on coming to Madison on Tuesday afternoon. Is it okay if I stop in and you show me the Orcam glasses? And then just to talk with him so that you get a good opportunity to actually try out some of those products. Any other questions? We want to thank all of you who attended today and tolerating our learning curve with the Zoom platform but it's going to take us a little bit more practice to get smooth with it. We are planning next year's webinar schedule and there will be more information that will be coming in January. You may, if you receive our publications, uh, we do have a new person who started on our staff, Jim Denham, who is an assistive technology specialist, started with us and his first AT program that he's going to be doing is going to be Wednesday, December 6th from 3 to 5 p.m. and he's going to talk about the competing chatter from Amazon's Echo, which is the Alexa that you saw on the video, and the Google Home device. And there will be no cost to attend those. We just ask that you let us know that you're coming. He will be offering classes starting in January, so if anybody gets an Alexa or a Google Home for Christmas, there will be classes in January that will can teach you how to use those devices, how to get the different skills onto the devices so that you can really maximize their potential. And to keep an eye out for other classes that he's having, lots of different options on learning screen reading or learning how to use your iPhone or Android phone, lots of different um, options. Okay, so Brent, do you still have some questions in your window or how are we doing? Looks like all the questions we had in the window have been answered here, but feel free to send more our way if you do. I think we'll go ahead then and sign off. We wish you the best times for the upcoming holidays, and have a good afternoon. Bye for now.